Hello, my friends. My name is Darren Gertis, and these are the three big stories for today. And then at the end, I have a special treat for you. Stay with me. Uh, first, I want to give you an update on something. Like we know that these two uh, uh, ships were sunk yesterday, and I, I'm not going to talk about that because I talked about that here. In Russia, lost two more Black Sea Fleet ships. So you go back to my very last video, and you can find that there. Okay. First big story. Now this goes back two days. U.S. urged Ukraine to halt strikes on Russian oil refineries, according to the Financial Times. But this was the only place from which this story emanated. We couldn't find other cooperating stories somewhere. And in fact, what happened was that uh, I saw this on Twitter, and then this is Euromaidan Press. Here's the actual story in Euromaidan Press. Ukraine denies FT's report that U.S. requested to halt strikes on Russian oil refineries, according to presidential advisor. He dismissed FT's report, denying that the United States had demanded Ukraine to refrain from striking oil infrastructure. Podoliak, emphasize that Ukraine would not accept dictates on how to conduct the war after two years of the full-scale invasion, nor should they. He stated that under international law, Ukraine has the right to neutralize the aggressor's war capabilities. He's absolutely 100% correct about that, no doubt in my mind. Okay, story number two. Will Putin try to use the Moscow massacre for his war in Ukraine? Okay, for that question, I answer with a question. Is the Pope Catholic? Well, yes, the Pope is Catholic. Yes, Putin will try to use the Moscow massacre to uh, advance his aims, his war in Ukraine. That's exactly, it doesn't matter if it had nothing to do with Ukraine, it'll still be used for as a pretext. Okay, so Business Insider, Military and Defense, uh, Russia was too distracted trying to conquer Ukraine to notice ISIS-K gunmen slip into Moscow to massacre concert goers, says Zelensky. Now, ISIS-K is the African branch of ISIS, uh, and they're not happy with Putin because of the war in Syria. Okay, so the U.S. had warned Kremlin several weeks beforehand that an attack on Russia was likely. Stop. I understand how they could have missed that because they could have thought, well, the U.S., they're kind of in a proxy war with us. They, they're supporting Ukraine. They're using that as a, as a pretext to, to do something. They're trying to distract. I get how they could do that. But joke's on them. Like, they actually did try to warn them. The warning was partly based on intelligence that indicated an ISIS-K presence in Russia. Two U.S. officials told the Washington Post, but Putin dismissed the warnings, calling them provocative. Okay, so he just was like, well, we're not going to listen to that. Okay, ISIS-K, a branch of the Islamic State based in Afghanistan, claimed responsibility for the attack. But Putin has been focusing his attention on Ukraine. So things got through. And it's not like Russia's without other enemies. They've just been totally focused on Ukraine. And so they didn't have the resources monitoring the other things that they otherwise might have. Okay, security analysts say that Russia's security agencies dropped the ball when it came to ISIS-K because all their energy is focused on Ukraine. Vera Mirnova, an associate fellow at the Davis Center at Harvard University who studies Islamist terrorist movements in the former Soviet Union, told the Financial Times that ISIS-K hit Moscow because the risk of capture was less. Yeah, I mean, it could have hit somewhere else. And why did they hit this public hall as opposed to a military base? Like if it was Ukraine, they'd be trying to hit a refinery or a base or something along those lines. But that's not what they were doing. OK, second story related to this. Uh, did Ukraine war lead Russian security services to neglect the Islamic threat? It's, a, it's part two of the same story. So the answer is apparently yes. Meanwhile, Ukrainian military intelligence and some Western commentators suggested that the whole thing had been a false flag event organized or facilitated by the Kremlin to consolidate the war effort in Ukraine. Okay, that was my first reaction was like, uh oh, is this a false flag? Now, I said it could be. And then I said, now you got to check yourself. We don't have evidence that this is the case. We have to make sure that we're actually seeing what we're seeing or we have to validate the facts or whatever. Because if you see something or you think that something's there because of the framework that you have, the way that you see the world, you have to check against that extra, right? You, I mean, I, I, I wasn't um, bracing against ISIS-K and, oh, okay, so that's what it is. I, I, but I was susceptible to believing something like a false flag because that seems to work within my framework. Okay.
There is so far no evidence that this is true, although the coordinated claims of Ukrainian involvement by Russian sources do suggest that the Kremlin plans to use the aftermath of the attacks for political gains. Now, as I was talking about this, what you see, it's kind of like after 9-11, the American Bush administration was looking at that going, well, that must have been Iraq, <laughs> right? Okay, slow down. It turned out to be what, what we know it to be with Osama bin Laden, but there were still some people in Washington that couldn't get beyond the idea that it was going to be somehow related to Iraq because that was what was in their framework. Now, was that a pretext to go after Iraq? I don't think so. I think they really believed that that was the case. Here, this is a pretext to go after Ukraine. You would think head should roll. Now, this is uh, sometimes a paragraph just jumps out at me. This is one of those cases. You would think head should roll at the FSB, but there was no meaningful retribution for their intelligence failures during the invasion of Ukraine. Putin is hesitant to implement a major reshuffle. So nobody's going to lose their job or something like that as long as they were loyal to the boss. Because in an authoritarian system, if you're loyal to the boss, doesn't matter if you're incompetent, your loyalty is more important than your competence. Okay, let's go on to the next. Putin's ratings rise during wars and terror. So if you look at where Putin is at the height of his popularity, it tends to be when he initiates a war or where there's some kind of rally around the flag effect. And you see that in multiple places. Here you see aggressive policy toward the West. Here you see after the annexation of Crimea and the Donbass. And here you see the rating was upgraded after the full-scale invasion. It had dropped down almost 20 points and back to 81. And then here... Right now, after being sucker punched by ISIS-K. Now, that's not good what happened with ISIS-K. I mean, like, who do you root for between Russia and Islamic militants? Like, that's, that's not a good thing. But this is explainable, completely explainable. Here you are. It's called the rally round the flag effect. The rally round the flag effect is a concept used in political science and international relations to explain the increased short run popular support of a government or political leaders during the period of a war or crisis. And you saw this again with George W. Bush uh, at 9-11. Remember when George Bush was elected back in 2000, it was very contentious. Uh, who actually won? It came down to the Supreme Court looking at you know how many votes were for which in a recount in Florida and he wasn't really that popular very narrow margin 911 happens he is, becomes very popular in the short run for some time very popular because he was a symbol by which Americans looked at to channel their like what do we do how do, how do, how do we proceed here after 911 okay so that's happening with Putin right now, and he's going to use it as a pretext to pin this on Ukraine. You just watch. Okay, last thing. Which tweet is stupider? And I want your comments below. Please uh, provide this for me. Jackson Hinkle, immediately after the invasion, said, Ukraine did it. They will pay. Okay, immediate knee-jerk reaction. Or Alex Jones, ISIS is a Western-funded cutout. Anyone can do basic research and will discover this is undisputed. Unfortunately, Central Asia is full of groups who, on average, have very low IQs because of inbreeding and malnutrition. It's a fantastic place for NATO to recruit its shadow army. That's number two. Or number three, Scott Ritter. And we have to translate the real Scott Ritter quote, and here it is. There is no doubt that Kiev is involved in the terror attack at Crocus. Okay, so knowing what we know now, who had the stupider quote? Scott Ritter, Alex Jones, or Jackson Hinkle? That's all that I have for my three big stories. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the likes, the shares, the subscribes, and the coffees. And thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.